Mr. Kirshner. Good afternoon, Chairman Pierce and members of the board. Uh, uh, we missed you this morning. I, we didn't. <laughs> I, I was listening in. <laughs> <laughs> I was here telepathically, so, you know, okay. online. Mm -hmm. um, I'm appearing again on behalf of AHA, ASHRA, and IONI, and this afternoon I'm uh, accompanied by Lawrence Hughes of the AHA. Uh, for this final panel, and congratulations on that, um, <laughs> we appreciate the opportunity to speak on the topic of whether the process being used by the board uh, reflects the board values, the comments of the public. Um, first of all, I wanted to commend the board on this public hearing process. Um, as someone who participated in the 2011 uh, oral uh, public meeting. Uh, this meeting is significantly more thoughtful approach, uh, more orderly uh, than the pro um, process used in the previous round. Um, what's been particularly gratifying to me, and I'm sure to many others who've been participating in this process, is the significant engagement that each of the board members has had with the panelists. Uh, I think that as someone who's testifying on behalf or appearing on behalf of a of an association, um, having that interchange with the board members is extremely value. It's certainly been productive for us, and we hope it is as well for the, for the board members. Um, we do have a significant concern, however, about the board's overall approach uh, to this uh, notice of proposed rulemaking. Um, in our view, the 2014 MPRM, which es essentially replicates the 2011 MPRM, is inconsistent with President Obama's executive order um, and the board's own prior practices and does not adequately engage with the affected communities um, about what changes this particular board feels uh, it should be made to its election procedures. In Executive Order 13563, President Obama stressed that rulemaking, quote, must allow for public participation and an open exchange of ideas. Executive Order 13563 requires that, quote, before issuing a notice of proposed rulemaking, each agency, where feasible and appropriate, shall seek the views of those who are likely to be affected, close quote, by the rulemaking. While this executive order is not technically binding on the board, and as it was noted by uh, the board in footnote 34 of the NPRM, uh, we, while it's not technically applicable, we don't believe that the, um, we believe that the order should inform the board's general process, and we think that, that has not occurred here. Except, with a couple, except for a couple of discrete issues, um, the board has not followed this path. Um, instead of seeking to obtain the views of those who would be affected, uh, the board has issued a detailed, complicated, and extremely lengthy rewrite of many of its representation procedures from start to finish. The compounding effect of so many simultaneous changes is unknown, leading many in the employer community to fear that the impact of these proposed changes um, and to raise concerns about both their efficacy and legality. Beyond the overly prescriptive nature of the MPRM, we also have a concern that the 2014 MPRM does not incorporate a single suggestion from the over 65,000 comments that were uh, submitted with respect to the 2011 MPRM. As the dissent to the current MPRM has noted, uh, there was apparently no attempt to, or uh, attempts, no significant of quant qualitative evaluation of the information received from the prior public comments that were received in 2011. We are concerned that this signals a reluctance by the board to engage in real dialogue over proposed rule changes especially since the board has already res responded to these thousands of comments when it submitted its revised final rules in December 2011. The 2014 MPRM, however, ignores the December 2011 revisions reverting to the rules as first submitted in June 2011. An attempt to incorporate or at least respond to the prior comments would lessen the fear of the employer community that the public comment process is from the board's perspective, largely perfunctory. As my partner Roger King noted in his remarks yesterday, the board's MPRM process here is in stark contrast to the process used by the board when it promulgated rules regarding bargaining units in the acute health care field in 1988 and 89. Those are detailed in our, in our written comments. But I would like to note that the US Supreme Court, in affirming the board's rules there, uh, relied upon the extensive notice and comment rulemaking conducted by the board 
and the board's careful analysis of the comments it received, which we think are an important component of it that should be included in uh, this current round of rulemaking. As evidenced by the sheer volume of written comments received in reaction to the NPRM, the proposed rule changes obviously affect parties throughout the country. We believe that the board would demonstrate that it values the input of the public, including the employer community and employees themselves, by adopting an alternative approach. We suggest that the board should put on hold its currently proposed rule changes and instead uh, adopt the approach for all of its proposed changes that it is conducting with respect to its policy regarding blocking charges. By presenting open-ended questions regarding what changes would work to make the representation process faster and fairer, uh, the board could develop a record on which it could, it could have a consensus regarding uh, the ways in which it should modernize and streamline its rules. As has been expressed by others, the key component of this approach would be to develop uh, a consensus by this board regarding the appropriate time period that should exist between the filing of a petition and an election. Balancing the interests of employees, laborers, and employers while complying with the act. You've already received significant input on this issue and we think that if the board could resolve this single matter and that single issue, uh, that would be the key to developing a consensus by many parties regarding other appropriate rule changes regarding the board's representation process. On behalf of the AHA and myself, thank you very much for the opportunity to provide these comments. Thank you. Thank you. Now, do you, do you think that we are acting in contrast to what is required under the Administrative Procedure Act? Uh, not currently. Okay. Well, that's nice to know. Um, <laughs> now, uh, uh, and uh, you also are cognizant of the fact that the representation rules uh, as they currently exist are a refinement of rules that had existed 20, 30, 40 years ago. Um, correct. The, the current rules are, um, I don't know that anyone would step forward and say that the, the manner in which the current rules are drafted are a hallmark of clarity um, or a modern approach, um, as has been noted. Um, the, there are concerns, though, with changes where it is not clear where the board is headed with those changes. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why the board is hearing so many concerns being raised by the employer community to all sorts of changes because there's not um, an indication from the board about where it's really headed with respect to the length of the uh, election period. Mm. Yeah, but I guess the point that I'm, I'm making is that there have been incremental modifications to the representation rule over the course of decades, none of which were done pursuant to, to you know, with the exception of the health care rules. Uh, any of those incremental modifications with respect to representation procedure uh, was done with a notice and comment period. It was just done. Um, wouldn't you say that, that uh, pursuing these rules, modifications that are focused on procedure and providing a notice and comment period is is much more engaging than what our history has shown in the past? Um, the uh, current, uh, the board's current representation procedures is a combination of both the articulated written rules as well as various internal board uh, procedures and protocols. Um, and obviously the board uh, has evolved over time its um, protocols, for example, the target date for an election, and the board is free to do that. Um, however, where the board has a written regulation, uh, it would need to follow um, the, the appropriate process for modifying those. And so I think that, yes, if you are changing your written regulations about the representation process, you need to go through a, a notice and proposed rulemaking. What we're suggesting, though, is that rather than start with a very detailed set of prescriptive changes where it's unclear where the board is really heading, that it would be better to follow the path of what you're doing with blocking charges, receive input, and, and we think that if a consensus could be developed on the board with respect to what the target date should be for an election, 
then I think you would see far less objection from the employer community about refinements to other process within uh, the representation process so that uh, it actually could be modernized and more clear for everyone concerned, employees, labor unions, and employers. Right. Current rules don't have the target date for elections. They don't. Right. Um, now, with respect to uh, to uh, the 65,000 notice uh, uh, comments, um, uh, that was all provided to the NPRM that was issued in 2011 different board, we have a new board, new eyes, and so forth. Uh, it, wouldn't you say that there was value to be able to utilize the ability to to uh, to uh, observe and, and absorb the, the 65,000 um, comments that were previously submitted? Yes. Uh, in our view, however, it would have been helpful for the board when it issued its new notice of proposed rulemaking to give some indication of which of those prior comments had an impact on the uh, p particulars of the rules. Um, uh, to, we assume if the board's going to follow the same process now that it did in 2011, the next step for the board would be a final rule that is issued. Um, and in, in that, if that is what occurs, then we will have no indication in the public what this board thinks of with respect to either the 65,000 prior comments or the 9,000 new comments that, that you've received. It would have been helpful from our perspective to get some indication of where this board is headed with respect to the input that it's already received. Well, I think we're ob obliged to acknowledge that all of the comments and, 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 and address those in, 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 a, in, in a final rule. Wouldn't that criticism be a little premature at this point? But this is an open comment period. Um, yes, it is, and, and if the board is going to come out with a new proposed rule rather than the final rule, which allows greater iteration, then, then perhaps my concern is not uh, well taken. But if the board's going to follow the same process as it did last time, which is you know, the proposed rule, which has itself in, you know, a very defined rule included with it, and then a final rule, there is no further a give and take between the board and the public with respect to the contents of that. Okay. Anybody else? Let me oh. throw some ideas out here. Uh, okay. Well, oh. can, can we have Member Hirazawa, who's been talking so much? <laughs> <laughs> I, I well, yield the floor. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I was just going to say, um, Kurt, if it makes you feel any better, we don't know where we're headed either. <laughs> um, you know, there are a lot of um, there are a lot of um, difficult decisions that are going to have to be made. A lot of Questions where there are significant considerations on on both sides, and there will be um, a lot of discussion among the members um, during the the um, coming period of time, and um, and I think that this has been we we got a a lot of extremely thoughtful and helpful comments three years ago and we've received um, more this time and so we have a lot to work with we have um, five members who I think you can tell are all very fully engaged and I think that um, I don't think I think it's clear that none of us and, you know, obviously um, no members of the public will know where this is going to come out until there has been some decision on first on whether there will be a final rule and then um, what exactly what will and won't be addressed and, and how it will be addressed. Um, but um, in terms of the um, in terms of the views of the public, I think that I speak for all five of the members here that we all consider them very important and um, an essential part of this process. Thank you. 
okay, I always love talking about process improvement. And that's basically what your comment was about because the way that I view it is that there's uh, the regulated community is somewhat unsettled because there's not really discernible trajectory at this point. And so you're basically looking at a giant mosaic of all these potential changes um, without, from your point of view, um, kind of an iterative input from stage to stage. What if, and I'm saying this with the full expectation that heavy objects will be thrown at me from my fellow members, but what if there was another stage where we essentially narrowed down whatever the issues were, inflection points were, um, to certain key ones? You mentioned your point of view that you think from a process point of view, if we just got the one time frame settled, or discuss, that would focus the discussion in the sense that the regulated community could uh, very quickly come to some conclusion on where we're going on this and perhaps some massive mass agreement. But leaving all that aside, that's your view of what would be helpful. Um, if we narrowed things down uh, to a more limited uh, set of issues, and it was consistent with the Administrative Procedure Act because I don't want to be speaking out of school about what we could or couldn't do, and then had another request to speak type thing, not necessarily another comment period because we've already gotten back to you on your FOIA request on that um, in, in terms of where the board ended up ultimately coming out. Um, would that be more helpful? Uh, yes. I mean, it would be helpful. It depends on what it's narrowed to. It depends, of course. You know, in terms of uh, the future process of the uh, proposed rule, um, my guess is that in the end, any compromise that reflects a consensus of this board is probably going to leave some members of the employer community and or some <coughs> members of labor unhappy. Um, so it would be difficult to have some final rule that has a consensus on this board that would make everyone 100% uh, happy. Nonetheless, um, I think that uh, having this board achieve a consensus would be um, a huge step forward. Um, and if that would be reflected in part by a narrowed set of requirements or, or regulatory changes uh, plus a target deadline, I think that, and then having some uh, public comment period, I think, personally, I think that would be a, a major step forward. And in a and a better process because people would know then when they're providing comments sort of where this particular board is headed uh, with the regulatory changes. Right. So I, I, if you are uh, able to do that type of process, I think it would be a significant improvement than say what we saw in 2011, which um, you know there were various uh, legal uh, concerns raised with respect to that. It ended up being set aside because of a procedural issue, but. Uh, several of the components of the current NPRM do raise legal concerns, and so if those are addressed in the in the next stage, then I think many in the employer community might have a different level of concern, uh, particularly if the target date for the election is is identified. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you thank very you. much. Thank you. Thank you.